Truth Seeker and or its affiliates are not responsible for any strange phenomena that may occur during or after listening to this podcast, which may include the following. Heightened senses of awareness, psychic abilities, UFO sightings, alien contact, time loss, out-of-body experiences, ringing in the ears, ESP, lucid dreaming, increased synchronicities, astral projection, telepathy, stronger intuition, levitation, miraculous healings, and or remote viewing. Please be advised to listen at your own discretion. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Truth Seeker Podcast. I'm your host, Truth Seeker, and uh, excited and delighted again to be with you guys again today. So uh, we got an awesome show planned for you all. We're going to be discussing all things spiritual, spirituality, all that good stuff, as always. Um, got an awesome guest lined up for you guys today. Before I go any further, though, I want to say a huge thank you again to everyone who has been uh, supporting the podcast, supporting the music uh, via Patreon. We are a listener supported supported show, and I could not do this without your help. So again, thank all of you guys from the bottom of my heart. Anybody who's ever contributed it in any type of way, thank you guys again. So I want to give a, a quick shout out to a couple of the newest patrons and recognize you guys by name within the last week or so. Shout out to Curtis H. Thank you for coming aboard. Aaron Kessler. Blessings to you, Joseph Arthur. And Sanyo Ocho, thank you guys for believing in my work, believing in the podcast. If you'd like to support, head on over to patreon.com backslash truthseeker. There you get access to my entire discography of music, which is like 10 plus albums, 200 songs, a um, bunch of really cool stuff that you get access to. You also get access to the Thursday Night School of the Mystics, which is our community aspect to what we're building here uh, with the podcast. You get access to our Discord, which is our daily chat, our daily community chat, hangout, all that good stuff. When And so pretty much after the podcast, I like to go hang out in the Discord and commune with some people about the episode. So yeah, if you're looking for community, looking to build with people, make sure that you check out the Patreon uh, page and there's a bunch of cool stuff there for you. Um, you also get discounts and stuff. So I just put out my first guided meditation. And so it's... Um, up now at truthseeker.com if y'all want to check that out it is the throne room visualization so i worked really hard on that and uh it takes you on a journey through ancient uh israel and through the tabernacle of moses and uh it took me a long time to to get it because i wanted it to be accurate with uh because i'm taking you on this tour like a guided meditation and uh pointing out a lot of the artifacts and a lot of the altars and the animals and things like that that were there, the priest and what they were wearing and describing the colors and, and the sounds and all of that stuff is in the recording as well. So you can hear uh, crowds of people in the background. I hired voice actors to come on and play roles in the meditation as well. It's a really immersive experience and I'm really proud of it. And uh, you can read some of the, the testimonials that I have already up on the website um, from people who have um listen to it and went on that journey and there's some really powerful stuff there it takes you into the tabernacle of moses into the holy of holies 
shoot you into outer space and there you enter the throne room of God and experience the angelic beings and four living creatures and all of this really beautiful stuff and worked really hard on it, voice actors and all. So if you want to check that out, head on over to my website, truthsticker.com. If you're a patron, you get a discount to that as well. So yeah, I'm really excited and going to be working on some more very soon. So uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, the Colors EP is pretty much done. I'm waiting on one feature to come back. The previews and all of that stuff is already up. Uh, all of it's on, on the website, truthsticker.com, and you can listen to the majority of it already on the Patreon page as well. So that's what I've been working on. The Colors EP, the Guided Meditations, um, doing my my uh, personal one-on-one coaching and counseling sessions as well. Um, everything's at the website. So all that's out the way. I'm going to bring on today's guest, Kelly Cooper. Welcome to the podcast. How are you, my friend? I am good, Derek. Thank you for having me. I'm always happy to connect with fellow like-minded truth seekers and woo-woos, and I love them. And <laughs> But it's not woo-woo, is the thing. It's very real stuff. So yeah, I'm excited to talk about it. Okay, that's a good place to start. So you do coaching, you put together courses, a lot of talk about mm -hmm. uh, the law of attraction, how to apply it to yep. our lives, how to apply it to yep. business really every area of our lives. I've been focusing on lately how to apply it to spirituality and how to, uh, yeah. you know, create miracles and healing and stuff. Mm. And so those same laws ah. that we would apply to our business or our favorite parking spot or whatever, we yep. bring that, bring those same principles into, okay, we're going to go on this session or I'm going to talk to you on the telephone and what we see is mm -hmm. going to manifest and create it. So I've been, it, it, it pretty much took my faith to a whole nother level with seeing people get healed and all types of stuff like that. So when of it comes course, to, yeah. when it comes to the law of attraction, you're mentioning, uh, you know, some of these, these practices and stuff, uh, being woo woo is what you bring to the table. Yeah. Is it, is it more, um, woo woo or is it more practical or somewhere in between? I would say like I'm 95% woo about everything just because you almost can't not be with this sort of stuff. Cause it's just, a different way of looking at things and the language we use. But I would say I, I'm not woo woo about it. I'm very practical down to earth and real about it. Um, because I think that there's a lot of with personal development in general and the law of attraction in particular, I think there's a lot of stuff that gets glossed over that, that that's not discussed and people struggle with it because they don't, they have all these elements of themselves that they don't know what to do with all this negative energy and this negative thinking. And then people are just like, well, just trust the universe and think positive and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, yeah, that's nice in theory. But the reality is we didn't grow up. Most of us believing these sorts of things, being connected to that element of ourselves. So yeah, the reality of our energy is you have a lot of crap. Like you have a lot of limiting beliefs. You're skeptical, understandably you the world is a very the world is an illusion we have all this faulty thinking about reality but it seems very real to us so all of a sudden to ask your mind to just move into this completely different way of looking at things that's a process yeah. and even even slow movement you you can get results you don't have to jump full bore like into believing things you really don't because let's face it your mind has always based your belief system on what it observes, and then it draws a conclusion, it makes a decision, it decides this is what happened, this is what I believe. So all of a sudden, the law of attraction and all these spiritual universal laws come along, and they're telling you, no, the inside starts first, and then the manifestation, then the physical reality takes shape around you. So asking your mind to start believing things in a completely opposite way without any evidence when your whole life, the evidence comes first, then the belief, that's a very different way of operating. So I think a lot of people, there's a, it's a gradual process um, that doesn't mean slow, but I think people, what happens with the law of attraction is they intellectually understand certain things and then they think, oh, I believe this now. And it's like, no, 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 you actually don't believe it now. It's okay. You don't believe it yet. And yeah, I think it's just, you know, people, it's just realizing it's a process that you have to deal with some stuff that maybe you think you don't need to deal with because you just activate positive energy and you get what you want. And it's like, yeah, that's good. But that's like that energy is competing against like 20 years of like crap energy. <laughs> so it's like your baby energy of like abundance, these little wispy vibes you're trying to activate. It's wonderful. But then I was saying to my husband the other day, your real vibe looks like the pits of Mordor from the Lord of the Rings. And it's like, fear and anxiety and all these different things. And it's like, yeah, so it's like, we got to kind of deal with the crap a little bit. 
first, and maybe people don't think that's maybe part of the process. So in that sense, I think my advice is more like practical and down to earth in that I acknowledge the reality of humanity where other people just like, we'll just jump to all the good stuff. And it's like, yeah, that's great. But there might be some stuff in between you have to tackle first. Yeah, and I think it starts there. Uh, we're looking at it like a level of faith, like, okay, we're just going to step out. Exactly. We, we can't really prove it, but we're going to believe it, and we're going to try it. And then once we start exactly. seeing results and manifestation, then we be, we, we move from having faith to, uh, and even from belief to actually knowing, okay, this is how the universe of works. Of course. Mm -hmm. That's And you're so right, Derek, like, cause it starts with the willingness hey, there's something intuitively, emotional level, something's resonating with me here. Like, I feel like I'm connecting with something that I've actually always known, mm -hmm. but didn't just really think about and didn't enter my consciousness. Yeah. So what I would say to people is, your feelings are a guidance system alerting you to what's true and untrue. All, the, all of that law of attraction, the universe loves you, got all that warm, fuzzy stuff, there's a reason it feels so good. Because big use like, yeah, this is how we communicate with you through your feelings. We're letting you know, yeah, that's yeah. true. That's why that feels good. All this stuff, the reality we're looking at now and it feels so bad, lack, limitation, scarcity, we hate each other, everything's falling apart. Yeah. There's a reason that feels badly. Not just because our mind thinks it's upsetting, because there's intuitively, there's a part of us that's like, yeah, this really isn't how reality is supposed to function. We're not supposed to be how we are. Something's very wrong here. So I would say to people, you know, learn to trust your feelings as much or not more so probably than your mind. Yeah. But it's just a different way of evaluating things. We're not used to evaluating things from the level of feeling and intuition. But yeah, if something feels right about this, and like you said, as you move along, manifestations come in and it goes from theory oh, I should feel and think this way according to the law of attraction to get what I want to, oh, I actually have evidence in my own life. And like you said, that's very powerful, especially for the mind because the mind wants the evidence first and then the belief. So yeah. it will let you believe these things more easily if it can point to something in your own life, not something you read in a book or what Abraham Hicks told you or what this person, their, your friend told you about. So yeah, it's really about just that willingness to start. You need to trust the faith. And yeah, you just got to keep going and the path opens up as you as you keep committing to it. You start small and then there's like like, you know, I come I come from um, the um, scriptural standpoint, right, coming out of evangelical mm. Christianity. Right. And um, so I, I relate everything back to the, the scriptures. But it, there's a scripture that talks about like if you start out with the few things, the small things, and you're faithful with it, you work it and try it, you'll be entrusted to rule over more. So if you can uh, exactly. try those small things or whatever, and then you're like, wow, this is real. This is, it's almost like a, it's almost like a muscle that you have to work out. You start picking up small exactly. things, and you get heavier mm -hmm. things, and, and then it's big things, but it has to start somewhere that faith and belief and then you test it and work it and try it and then it's proven to you and and the whole thing with just uh those di different beliefs that we already know even from like a, a, a christian biblical perspective i remember like there was all these mm. things that we we knew on the inside but we didn't know if it was true but we knew it on the inside and so coming from like yeah. a christian perspective we would start tearing the bible apart just reading all these crazy verses that nobody talks about mm -hmm. and you're like wow this stuff yeah. that i knew intuitively the prophets knew it yep. like they practiced it the sages mm -hmm. and seers knew this stuff and now we have you know some some text or whatever that backs up this belief system in this way of life and it's it's beautiful when everything starts exactly. lining up for you you know because, yeah, because as much as we have faith and evidence, there is still that part of us that likes that proof and whatever. So that validation and stuff, it, yeah, it can feel good because there is a part of our mind that's very like sciencey proof, like put it in a test tube, prove this to me, show me how it works. So, yeah, anytime we can get anything that we get that validation, it is very powerful. And, you know, talking about faith, you know, that that humans have the ability to have faith in something they can't see and prove. I don't think that's just a random thing we are able to do. I think yeah. we were instilled with that because that's the only way to connect to that world because we can't prove it. We can't get this science like proof like, yeah, this is God and this is how the law of attraction. Technically, quantum physics is probably the closest thing to all of that. I don't know too much about that. I'm not as interested in that aspect of it. But if you're a sciencey proof person and you like the LOA, 
look up that stuff and you'll probably get stuff your brain will like and be like, oh yeah, maybe this isn't some woo woo spiritual thing. It's actually science yeah, kind exactly. of too, which is kind of interesting, you know? So yeah, so the fact that we have faith that proves to me there is something beyond us. We were instilled with the faith to connect to it because without the faith, with we wouldn't be able to believe anything we couldn't see. So yeah, like it all, when we start to think about it, it all kind of makes sense. And it's like, oh yeah, the, the fact that we're able to do that means that there must be something to have faith in or else we wouldn't be able to do it. So yeah, there is something beyond us. Stop trying to understand it. Your mind with our limited consciousness of humanity and further limitation of you, your your limited perspective of whatever human being you identify as, as I, me, good luck. Like you'll never do it. You'll hit a wall very, very quickly and don't do not do it because it'll just pull you away and keep you stuck in the world of the mind and, the phys- and, and investing so much in the physical material world. And you don't want to do that because... Ugh, no, it, you could have a lot better than that. Don't settle for what you're seeing with your eyes. Talking about the feelings, right? The feel good feelings. Um, I got a message and I get these messages from time to time, like different, mm. like uh, evangelical Christians will listen to the podcast and they see mm-hmm. numbers, they see it doing good. So they feel like they have to reach out and say like, okay, you're doing it wrong. This is the way to do it. And some of them are just yeah. taking shots or whatever. But I read a message this morning and I've read these time and time again, but they say, you're just telling people, what they want to hear. You're not telling them the truth. You're telling them this feel good message, right? About God yeah. and, and the way things are. And, and yeah, I am the feel yeah. good message. I think, and I think whatever God is would prefer your message than the fiery pits of hell or the God is, I think if God, I remember I read this once, it was by a former, someone very high up in maybe the Catholic religion, a bishop or something. And one of the things, he wrote this article, he no longer was of the faith and he left the church or whatever. And one of the last things he said, and it stuck to me, he's like, if whatever God is, if he saw what religion was, he wouldn't even, whatever, would not even understand what it is we're doing. They'd be like, what, what is all this? Like, you hate each other and this God and this it would like whatever God is, I think is something so beyond our comprehension. And we basically, because we are, we are a person, we think of it as this big person in the sky that maybe we have to curry favor with and we have to please and he will punish whatever God is. We are perfect in its eyes. Judgment is the realm of humans. I'm sorry. All you people that think that some force is judging us. I'm sorry. I think it's kind of bullshit for what, to what end who's judging us for what, who's keeping score, what, who, why do we need to be, you know what I'm saying? To me, none of that makes sense. That's all humanity, judgment and, you know, deserving based on, you know. So, yeah, I just think whatever good, that's what is, that what God would want us to say, not the bad <laughs> stuff. So screw those people there. I, I feel bad for people that have faith like that and think you God that way. Yeah. I imagine that's a very miserable existence. And I, I feel empathy for people like that because that's a sad existence to think God sees you that way. And I don't know. I just, it, that sucks to me. I don't know. I wouldn't want to be think that way about if I was a religious person, I'd rather think God's love and wants me to be happy and wants us to enjoy our human experience and will help support us in whatever we need in this human experience. So yeah, I don't, those people. Yeah. Just, okay. Whatever. Like, sorry, <laughs> much love to you for your, that miserable view of God in the world. So whatever. Yeah, right. Right. It's either, God loves you or God hates you, right? Which which ones? Yeah. I would rather I would rather base my existence off of the love. I've been there with the hate, the whole suffering servant, and that's yeah. really a Gnostic approach to say that you have to suffer to be yeah. righteous or to be holy or to be accepted exactly. by God. You have to do without. It's like it's like what it's like the, the universe or God doesn't need our suffering for like some kind of currency to like create what it's creating. <laughs> exactly. It's like well, you need to pay me with your. I'll I'll transmit your suffering into money that I'll then bump into your bank account yeah it's like um okay and this kind of goes back to what we said about our feelings being a guidance system to think of god and religion in that way i imagine that feels really badly and that's big you being like yeah no that's not how it is (laughs) don't think that like no Mm -hmm. that's not god that's not what this is and again it's the guidance system so anyone out there like you have that idea of religion where like you think god is like angry with you or like you have to curry favor and like you have to prove your worthiness and just really like that that feels bad right like think about oh feelings guidance system yeah maybe does it feel good to think god loves you yes yeah. okay yes that's true then yeah it's um yeah it i just whatever good, yeah. that is it's good it's love and and we can't understand it basically i think 
Because there, there was this uh, Christian notion in the church that I came out of where they would say we don't because it says we don't walk by uh, sight. We walk by faith. And they say, don't trust your feelings. Don't trust the way something yeah. makes you feel when it's like, hold on. Like if I'm around you and I feel bad every time I'm around you, if I'm around yeah. you, and all you do is <laughs> gossip and talk down and point out the negative yeah. in every situation and it makes me feel a certain type of way. I probably should listen to those feelings like because I feel this way for for a reason. Right. And so feelings do matter. They try to say, well, you know, you guys are just into emotionalism and sensationalism emotions in especially with spirituality or God, the universe um, changing your life, being, you know, from moving from a, a suffering servant to a son or a daughter who is who is who are heirs. Right. And uh, mo- yeah, you know what I'm saying. Moving from the place of judgment to a place of acceptance—that's it. That's an emotional mm-hmm. experience. That's very emotional. Yeah, our emotions guide us. And you know what? Um, and the, the thing is, too, people sending that guys, especially with religion, if you if you have clarity about your religion or about your belief system, you're not sending you, that people like that. They're not sending messages like that. That's a lack of clarity because if you're clear on your beliefs and someone else has a different belief, there's really no emotional charge to the opposition because you have clarity. So when you get all worked up about someone else's belief system, guess what? You don't have clarity about your own and that's okay. But then be willing to question the clarity. Don't look for it. Don't try to pick apart the other person. You can go back to feeling okay about your own belief system. Now I would imagine what you're talking about triggers a lot of people with that sort of belief system. I imagine as much as they might believe this is true, on a deeper level, we don't like believing things that feel badly to us. So if someone's walking around with this belief system that makes them feel miserable and that like, you know, God hates them and, and that they have this light and they're meant to suffer and you come along, oh, happy love, God is love. Of course that's gonna trigger them because they're like, no, but this is true and, and it makes me miserable and you're believing this thing and you're happy? No, 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 but no. So like, yeah, it's like, if you're being triggered, especially for by crappy beliefs, like question them for a minute do you really want to keep believing all these crappy things it's like but yeah people will want to and they'll they'll do it so yeah it's like especially with this sort of work you know if you get into this stuff you you will be challenged and you know as you get clear the critics or people that don't share the same views as you they they won't come around as much or when they do it doesn't the emotional response is completely different Mm -hmm. and yeah like you said it's all about emotions and feeling it really everything comes down to our feelings. We like things we like because they make us feel good. We don't like what we don't like because they don't like how it's our feelings are everything. So to say it's nothing, I, I can't imagine living from that world because <laughs> for me, it's everything. <laughs> like, I don't think I feel. So yeah. I would be very in much in trouble if I had mm-hmm. to abandon that part of my, my being. Hey, I don't know. Your, your sound is a little muffled. I don't know if your hand is over the microphone maybe. Oh, uh, sorry. I might have had it. Is it feel sound better now? It's still the same. It's just got a little muffle to it. It's not really okay, bad, but it's not as good as it was. I'm not sure. Maybe it's a connection issue. It's fine though. We can yeah. still work with it. Um, so going back to the law of attraction, where this started, where where were some of the um, the early times for you that 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 showed you that this stuff was real? Where did you start out in in, in finding that? Look, if I try these principles and apply this this way of thinking um, to my life, I would works. say if if I had to think about when I if I had to think about from the point where I actually was conscious of the teaching, I would say one of the first things that really got me was like how I manifested one of my first um, uh, independent uh, self employment type into uh, opportunities, yeah. which was one of my intentions I had set was one of the things I always wanted to do for myself. There's a lot of and people there too. Things. Yeah, you know what? I know for a lot of you, it seems like you can't imagine how you're going to get there. You will just be patient and just like have a little faith. I know you get, what am I going to do? How am I going to get it going? How am I going to make the money? And you know, it's all of that comes together, but yeah, it was just like, I had set an intention about like, Oh, it'd be really cool to get paid for, to do writing. It's something I never thought about before. I wasn't a writer in particular, but I was just like, I would have been writing for fun. And one day, yeah, I just had an urge to go to backpage.com, which is like Craigslist. I don't even know if it's still around this website, but it's basically like a Craigslist with all different postings. And I saw a, uh, uh, a posting for this company that was looking for writers to create uh, create content for their web properties. And again, this was not some long held goal I have. It wasn't something I was attached to. I was just like, oh, that'd be kind of cool. And I sent my application. I didn't think about it. 
And two days later, they accepted me, and it ended up being like a, a lucrative source of income for two years. It allowed me to start traveling the world and earning money while I traveled, which was my other main goal. And yeah, it was just one of those things where I set the intention. I had this weird intuitive nudge to visit a website I never visit. Why did it pop into my mind? I don't know. And there was this opportunity. So it's, yeah, it's just like, I'm like, huh, interesting. Like I kind of put something out there and I was detached. That's the big thing here, guys, the detachment. That's not easy though. Cause a lot of the stuff we want is very important to us. And we like, I can't detach from it. I need it. I let, have to let the universe know that I need it. And this need energy is going to help. But again, we kind of want to tamper that down. But yeah, I would say that was one of the first things where I was like, Oh, interesting. And like you said, it was just one of those things where you start learning these new different things and you're just open, you have faith and you have trust. I started paying more attention to my belief system, how I was focusing. That's something most of us, we don't really do unless you're, unless you're not a, a really a, a growth oriented person. You probably don't think much about your inner world. Um, but yeah, once I started paying attention and I started reading more books, like you said, just, it's a lot of little things start happening yeah. in your life where you're like, wow, like, there's something to this. And like you said, then you get faith about the bigger things and then you feel more confident and then that influences your actions. And yeah, it all just unfolds. And I think the one thing I would say is uh, that helps people with this teaching, especially whatever bad feelings you feel now about your life, it has nothing to do with you don't have a boyfriend or you don't have as much money as you like, or you can't find a new job yet. It's the story around all that stuff. So if you can be a little patient with changing your energy remembering the manifestation is not the answer to the positivity you're looking for anyway, it really will help you uh, on this journey a lot more because you won't always be in such a rush to get your stuff. And um, yeah, it's really just, if you can just let it unfold gradually and look for that proof and that evidence, you just keep going and it, it's pretty awesome. Yeah. You'll, you'll start to see that link very clearly. It kind of, it kind of sounds like you started off kind of big though, especially from, you know what I'm saying? From a place of employment, you know what I'm saying? Moving to like, I guess kind of, but it really, like um it wasn't like this thing where I'm like I'm gonna manifest this thing it was just kind of this idea of like I had the awareness of this teaching and it was like oh yeah that'd be kind of cool and knowing what I knew about energy I saw how it came together but um yeah I guess technically I did kind of start off with bigger goals but um yeah I don't know I think it's good to set the intentions for the bigger stuff from the outset, but just don't feel pressure to get them you know, as quickly as possible. Be a little patient, not because it has to take a long time, but just because you don't know the perfect timing for stuff. The reality of your energy is you do have some kinks to iron out and that could take a little time. And yeah, it's just, um, so yeah, put the big stuff out there if you want, but don't feel the pressure right away to think, well, if it doesn't come by tomorrow, the law of attraction doesn't work or something like that. Yeah, it start it starts with little principles like that, and then you start to see little things connecting and synchronicity, yeah. and all of these things start to line up, and you f you figure out that your thoughts do have power. And yeah. that right there, you, you know what I'm saying? Your thoughts having power. And I want to go back to this point just because there's some questions in the chat uh, from my friend Allie mm. uh, talking about uh, the feeling, and so I think she might have misunderstood you about um, only doing what feels good. I think the reason we need to focus on what feels good and what's pleasing uh, mm. to the to the body, to the mind, to our families, to our friends, is because it's not mm. that we we don't we do we don't not experience the bullshit. We don't not experience the hard times. We do, right? So it's like mm. not focusing on all the bad stuff and getting overwhelmed and not being able to see a good outcome because of the wind, because of the waves and the, in the trials of life that come, mm, the positive yeah. thinking helps us move and navigate through that stuff. Right. It's not that you don't yeah. experience heartache or hurt or, or hardship. Oh yeah. Oh, but oh. The positive thing, thinking yeah. helps you get through that. Right. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Believe me, anyone, if you are interested in this interview and you go to study my work, you'll see I'm all about feeling your shit. I will not tell you to, to, to tamp it down. Like it don't That's exist or something, right? Up. Yeah. Like the law of attraction is, I think one of the big misconceptions is people see it as this tool, like a personal development tool to like manipulate your reality. And it's like, oh no, no, silly rabbits. No, 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 little boys and girls. Law of attraction, universal law, always been operating in your life is one of the things that like holds the whole universe together. 
So I think what happens is, yeah, people jump right to the positivity, the, pipe, the, the vibration activation with the affirmations and the vision boards. All that stuff is wonderful. But if you realize LOA, universal law, oh, I've always been creating my reality. Yeah, you might have some negativity to contend with, some negative beliefs to contend with, some Limiting. pain, and you're not, you'll need to lighten the load energetically a little bit. So yeah, definitely engage with your feelings, but always with the intention of healing them. Not the old way of engaging with our feelings where it's like we're just kind of feeling sorry for ourselves and like, mm -hmm. oh, woe is me, nothing can change. Yeah, you might have your pity party. You might go through that phase first a little. It's okay. But yeah, always fill your negativity with that intention of I'm purging this energy to make room for new energy. And that's a whole different experience than when we just are like, oh, I, I feel crappy and life is crappy and I can't do anything about it. And we just kind of wallow in it. But yeah, no, definitely. Um, I do not advocate positivity, like militant positivity, that which that is basically just denial. You're in denial about your feelings. Mm -hmm. You can't trick the universe. The universe isn't listening to your words. Oh, wow, look at her saying she's so positive and she feels so abundant and everything's great. But inside your energy is like survival mode, fear. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What's going to happen? Like that's what the universe responds to. So, yeah, there's no um, trying to fake your feelings, trying to pretend you believe stuff you don't trying to pile a thin layer of positivity on like a mile mountain high, mile high mountain of crap. Yeah, that will not work um, in a yeah. very surface way. You might see very little changes. You can activate a little bit of energy, but for consistent stuff, the big stuff, that'll never ever work. You have to move into a place of knowing, right? Because if yeah. you have you have your ideas, you have your goals, you have this course that you're set out on one day, the next day, you wake up in a bad mood. Exactly. We're and human. So you have, does that I'm negate, sorry that you have feelings. <laughs> it doesn't negate your course though. You don't just say, Oh, I'm not I'm feeling no, not at all. bad. It doesn't look like I'm gonna, you know what I'm saying, make it through this. So that's when especially like in the scriptures or whatever, because they're still talking about the, the feeling thing. Don't go by your feelings there because you may wake up having a bad day and you're feeling like, you oh, know yeah, what, this, oh, I you can't know what? do it. That's really great. I'm glad yeah. you brought that up. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to, but because, yeah, when we talk about like following your feelings, what me and Derek are talking about, we're talking about intuitive, big you like feelings, the feelings of like the crappy feelings. I'm not talking about the feelings that are the surface level feelings that are re a reaction to your mind's mental chatter. That's not what I'm talking. Those are feelings. No, that's not. Yeah, don't. That crap is like, don't listen to that. Don't do that. <laughs> Just that's give up today. <laughs> yeah, like the feelings we're talking about, the, the good, follow the feelings. Those are the intuitive, when you're connecting with spirit, connecting with truth, intuitive knowing feelings. Not there's the a, crap surface feelings. There's a lot of Christians listening, right? So we'll just say God and the devil. God, God and, devil, and the yes. devil. Okay, don't, listen to the like. devil. Yeah. don't listen to yeah, the, 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 the devil. Don't listen to the devil. That's like the reaction <laughs> to your mental chatter that never, ever stops, by the way. So you really, if you're especially into LOA type stuff, yeah, do your affirmations, do your vision boards, do all that crap that makes you feel good. But really getting a rein in on your mind and your mental chatter will be the most powerful thing you can do for any sort of inner work like this because your mind is going to be your biggest barrier. Your mind has very different goals than your spirit. And the law of attraction, the, the space you operate from, spirit, emotion, intuition, your mind doesn't understand it. It doesn't belong there. It will try to keep imposing itself and wanting to keep doing things its way. Because of the old it program. It cannot be. <laughs> yeah. Like, it cannot be this way. So, yeah, it's your mind, your, your mind is going to be your biggest challenge because it's always going to want to pull you to, because spirit's like, let's make an amazing life. Your mind is like, let's just minimize your pain. And that's a very let's low bar. play video games all day. You deserve life. it. <laughs> exactly. It's like, okay, let's minimize the pain by, let's go get the minimum wage jobs so you can pay your bills because I don't like this uncomfortable feeling when you don't have money. And here it's like, go make passion for profits and go live your dream job. But your mind's like, no, no, no. I just want to make all my uncomfortable feelings go away. And there's very, very little. It will, the bar is very low for that. So yeah, just if you can rein in your mind, that's the best place you can focus your attention and then go to all the all the positivity, all the vibration activation with the vision boards. Yeah, all of that's great. But all of that stuff's going to work a lot better if like you have a base energy that's mm -hmm. cleaned up a little bit. It's kind of like priming the wall before you paint it. Like all that stuff's going to work a lot better if you have a vibration that's a little calmer and more stable. That's more that energy is more of a match for that new energy and it'll be able to stick better than when you're feeling all crazy and, and negative and, and panicky. And then you're like, well, let me go say some affirmations and I hope that'll get me my money. And it's like, and eh, that's probably not going to happen because 
your energy now is just too volatile to to let that other energy work in your world in any real way. Yeah. And and not getting off the path um, goes back to having a good foundation and a goal of like yeah. even writing something down. What does it look like? What's going to aid it? Have a goal and not just like obviously we, 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 we're we following the spirit daily wherever the spirit takes us but you got to have a yeah. goal something that you're working towards because those winds and those waves and the different ideas that come they'll pull you different places and you got to have that that plumb yeah. line that foundation no this is what i'm creating you know and not because i've, yeah. I've been talking about too how like uh intuitive creative people have all of these awesome ideas I get a thousand yeah. of them a day. Great ideas. But then it's like you don't do anything. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Right. Or, or you get overwhelmed yeah. or you start working on one. And it's going good. And this other idea pulls you. You work on it for a week and then you forgot everything you started on this one. And it's just stuff coming. And I've got a yeah. lot of friends who don't know how to tap into consistency because they have those ideas and they change. They change uh, niches yeah. uh, every week. They got mm -hmm. a new thing, every yeah. a, a new mm -hmm. uh, MLM, a new offer. Hey, I'm selling this. Oh, hey, I'm God, selling this. Online, I know. The game, the new game to changing have opportunity. That <laughs> plumb line, yeah. yeah. Know what it is yeah. and stick no. with it. Get the vision. Yeah, I would say too. Yeah, it's good to work towards something. But a couple things I would say about goals is make sure the goal is not too arbitrary. What happens is our mind sets a lot of goals like that actually don't mean anything. So guess what? When you achieve them, you won't feel much of anything. Because it doesn't mean anything to double your income or to grow your email subscriber list. Yeah, these are great goals for your business. But guess what? Inherently, that means nothing, how much money you have or how many people are on your. So it's like when you reach that goal, it'll be like your mind is like, yay, we got our 25% increase in <laughs> subscribers. And spirit's like, yeah, so who cares? <laughs> Big deal. What is that? Does it make you a better person? Are you better now or more capable or valuable? Exactly. So yeah, so have your goals with like your business and things you're passionate about. But just make sure they're not super arbitrary, like very specific. Cause like I said, you'll achieve them and you will be like, Oh, I don't, who cares now? Like I just didn't make me feel good. And also I would say too, set some energetic goals in your life. Cause all you're ultimately after is feeling. And if you can activate the energy now of what you want, guess what? You'll manifest more stuff that feels just like that energy. So think about your business, your personal life, um, maybe your health, your relationships with your friends, your family, your spouse, whatever. Energetically, how do you want these things to look? Energetically, how do you want to feel as you move through the world? And um, those are very worthy goals too. And like I said, as you activate that energy within you genuinely, just for the sake of activating it, not to just try to get something. You got to be careful, LOA people. We get very much like, I just want my stuff. I actually don't care if I'm happy. That's a very dangerous trap yeah. to fall into. But yeah, set some energetic goals. And yeah, and then from the energetic goals too, what happens is a lot of inspired action stems from that higher vibration. And any action you take, the world of action will be, your relationship with that will be much more different and much more harmonious. And um, yeah, but yeah, try to work towards some, you want to feel like you have some reason to get out of bed every day, like Derek was saying, like that's important for just overall well-being and yeah. just creative, the creative energy being channeled towards something is, is powerful, yeah. Um. It's not all about um, subscribers or having a huge audience because, like, um, I believe in growth. I believe in the spirit yeah. that there's growth. I believe if, if what you're doing is it has life and it's going it's going to organically mm. grow. Your reach is going to get bigger. Uh, you know what I'm saying? It's going to grow organically. But it's not necessarily the number thing. Like, you can scroll Facebook yeah. and just see weird people with like 700 people watching them or 100 people watching them and you're listening like, what in the world are they even talking about? They're making it up yeah. as they go. They're making no sense, but they have an audience, right? So it's don't yeah. let the numbers fool you, man. Understand quality yeah, really over quantity as well, right? Yeah, like especially with law of attraction and business stuff. Listen, I get it. Like you have a business, so your mind is like, yes, this is how we make our money. But it's like energetically realize that your source is God, right? And your business is just one channel. Yeah, on a mental level, you're like, yeah, this is how I make my money. A lot of our energetic goals don't make sense logically. Um, but yeah, energetically stay open. Remember, your business is just one potential 
source, uh, one potential channel of infinite, God is your source. Now, if you're working that with intention and your energy is good, will you make a lot of money through your business? Yeah, probably because, you know, you're putting attention there, focus, you're flowing energy towards it. But yeah, always be open. Um, with business too, it's really easy to get into the getting mentality. The getting comes no matter what. Try to have the energy of giving. Because if everything's about getting something from somebody and like, yeah, at the core of it, yeah, you want clients, you want exposure. Everyone has that self-interest at heart with their business. It's fine. It's not a bad thing. But energetically, get, trying to get yeah. and then giving, the giving energy, very different feeling, very different journey. Um, and the getting, and guys, everything I'm telling you is implicit. It's implied. The stuff will come on the outside. Yeah. So a lot of this way I talk about the LOA, I feel like people's minds get very agitated. Like, what you talking about with just general feelings and just being happy and we want our stuff. Don't listen to her. <laughs> Go to the guy that's going to tell you how to the five steps to manifest the boyfriend in 30 days or whatever. Mm -hmm. Everything I'm saying it's implied will positively impact your physical reality, the money, the relationships, the weight loss, whatever it is you want, the new job. Yeah. But yeah, like energetic, kind of what you were said earlier. It's like really try to approach this teaching more from like a spiritual, like inner transformation thing. Not so much about just getting stuff on the outside you don't have. That mm -hmm. comes anyway. It has yeah. no choice because you're changing your energy because trying to using, using the law of attraction to get stuff you don't have and changing your energy internally in a meaningful way to change your physical reality, they are not the same thing said two different ways. Those are very different things, That's good. very different journeys, and they will feel very different. And the getting stuff you don't have journey is very painful and frustrating. <laughs> and again, I promise you, the other journey, focus inward, focus on the happiness, and then activate your energy around money when it feels good or, or take your actions around whatever. Yep. But That'll feel a lot better. You'll get what you want immediately, which is just to feel better. That's all you want anyway. And the stuff comes anyway. I yeah. swear to you, people are just like, don't listen to her. She's tricking you, mine. She's trying to get you to just be happy. She doesn't care about your money. You're getting a boyfriend. No, I'm not trying to trick you. I promise the stuff comes anyway. Make it the giving, the goal, the generosity of spirit, all of that and the money and it comes and it, you'll enjoy it much more because you won't enjoy the stuff you get if you're trying to get it just to take your pain away because it's not the true cause of your pain. So it won't work anyway. So, and that's a, a lesson that yeah. it's a hard, we take a while to learn. It, but, it, um, it, yeah, yeah, it will come, it comes with the territory. Um, but if that's your pursuit, if money is the pursuit, you, you're going to be messed up. Like I come out of the, the Christian evangelical circles where we had a lot of contention with what is known as the prosperity gospel which is take like yeah. all they talk about is money, how to get money, how to get the next, you know what I'm saying? Reach the next level of employment. Once you get that job, you need the next bigger job, more money, a bigger house, bigger yeah. car, maybe even an airplane, like really crazy goals. And it, it, it moves from like God or, or being like a genie in a lamp, like a gin catching a genie in a mm. lamp and making it grant you these yeah. wishes because you're doing the right thing or whatever. And it messes up your pursuit. And, and, and those who seek after money, will never have enough because you always want more. You're not going to learn how That's to be content yeah. where you are on, on the process, on the journey. So if you're focusing on your content, what you're creating, what can I, what do I have to offer people that's going to help them where they are versus what can I create yeah. to generate income? Those thoughts come in. Exactly. You, have to, you have to keep everything in perspective though, moving forward. And you know what, especially, um, especially if you're one of the people that you're trying to make your, turn your passion into a business, like, yeah. Yeah, and I get it. You you're doing it. It's, you feel desperate it sometimes, business. right? Yeah, and you feel, and I get it. Like you're not doing it as a hobby anymore. You want to turn it into a business. You want money, but like you're saying, when it all becomes about the money, nothing will drain your passion for that faster. Because yeah, you're no longer focusing on being of service and sharing your gifts and sharing your knowledge. You're like, yeah, I'm gonna write this blog post. Hopefully, I'll get a new client out of this, and then I'll get money. And it's like it's okay. You want the money, but like you said, when the money and the outside manifestations are the top of mind driver. Like you said, you'll never be satisfied, especially with money. Because think about money. There's no limit to how much money you can make. So your mind will never be satisfied with any amount you say. Right now you want to say, I want to make the, right, the illustrious six-figure, that's the big goal, right, for people, the six-figure earner on their online business. So you make whatever the minimum amount of money to make six figures a month is. You think your mind's going to be satisfied with that? Of course not, because you can make double that or you know what I mean so yeah, yeah when we make the outside the goal it's like there's no limit to what you can manifest from the outside so your mind will always be like and since your mind thinks the outside's the answer but it's really not it will always 
pull you away from going within. It'll be like, no, oh, this amount of money didn't make me happy. Let's try to double that amount. Oh, it wasn't this. Maybe if you got a boyfriend, you'd feel better. It will always try to just get you to want something else to take away the pain. And it's a very, yeah, it's a very dangerous trap to fall into. And yeah, just make it really try to go internal with the journey. Yeah, want what you want and, and think about it if it feels good. But really try to make the transformation the goal, knowing the stuff comes anyway, than trying to get something you don't have and using the yeah. law of attraction. It's very painful and very frustrating. It's just it's just the universe. It's just God. Like there's a scripture that says, delight yourself in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. Whatever yeah. it is that you desire, like it's there for a reason. Like those ideas yeah. are not like... evil. You know what I'm saying? Like people, yeah. they, they come from the suffering servant where they're not worthy. They don't deserve anything. I've been a bad person. Like that can yeah. linger, man. That really can because I've, I've spent mm -hmm. so oh, much issues of, yeah. time like hurting worthy people. Worthiness and deserving is huge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, worthiness and deserving that. issues are really big. You know, what's interesting with the law of attraction is it's easy for people to think the biggest barrier is whether or not you believe what you want is possible. And it's like, yeah, at the core, that's it. And in the theory of manifesting, that's the only issue you would have to contend with. But yeah, the reality of manifesting is very different. Like you're saying, us humans, we have a lot of stuff we're bringing to the table energetically, especially if you're coming from a more religious background, worthiness and deserving. Um, by the way, your worthiness and deserving, your, whatever you're doing, just that you exist here on earth, that's it. You are worthy and deserving. Yeah. It's not about what you do. It's not about what you contribute. Please Get that idea out of your mind because if that's the kind of idea you have, especially if you want to create an amazing life for yourself, you will never, ever be able to do enough for your mind to think you deserve what you want. It will never, ever happen, especially because you're a flawed human being. And then the good thing you do when you yeah. do the bad thing next week, guess what? You go back down again. You're not as deserving anymore. Yep. So, yeah, that's good. Deserving is inherent, <laughs> it's all, it's, deserving yeah, it's is inherent in your being. God loves me today, yeah. hates me tomorrow. He, it's like yeah. it's like mm -hmm. it's like it's like having that that uh flower. He loves yeah. me. He loves me not. He loves me not. He yeah, loves and it's, he you'll, loves you'll me never not. you'll never do enough to think you deserve because inherently you think you will if you, especially if you have this idea inherently we're bad and, and sinful or whatever. Yeah, we have worthiness and deserving issues. Guess what? A lot of you guys, you probably consciously don't think this. You might be very miserable right now with a certain situation in your life, but a deeper level, your mind is, it, it, things are exactly as how your mind wants them to be. It doesn't want you to have what you want. It has a negative association with it. If I get a lot of money, people will think I'm not spiritual. Or what if my poor family members start hitting me up for money and I'm going to have to deal with them? Or a lot of the stuff you want, you might have conflicting energy. You might not think you deserve it. Um, yeah, like there's a lot of stuff going on that's way beyond whether or not you believe in the law of attraction or yeah. you believe what you want is possible. And that's so why yeah, it's the, guys, in, like, the inner journey, afraid. right? It's the whole, it's exactly. not just about you getting stuff. It's about the sanctification. You're probably renewal. not. Gonna, yeah. Like you can't take a, a journey of inner growth without looking at some of this stuff and like shining a light on some stuff of like that might not be so comfortable to look at. But um, if you can just be honest with yourself always about how you're feeling, your motivations for wanting what you want and why you're doing what you're doing, how you really feel belief-wise, as long as you can be honest always about what's going on inside, you'll always be able to make the changes to in, internally to get externally, improve your life externally in some way. But that can't happen if you go to in denial about your feelings or you pretend to believe stuff you don't believe or you don't address other aspects like worthiness and deserving self-sabotage and all that other kinky energy that is just part of human nature yeah it's um because whatever you believe you create it yeah you yeah i get it i still I and mean, that's I've, not I've, there's some people in the chat that they don't like the you thing you have to do this you have to yeah. do this guess what whatever you but not whatever god believes that's besides yeah. the point it's whatever you believe if you believe that and you I, are a sinner in the hand of an angry uh, in the hands of yeah. an angry god guess what that's going to shape and mold your reality. But if you move from um, I'm loved and I am blessed and I am the righteousness of God, I am healed, all of these things, you start believing that, that becomes your reality. It goes from yeah. pulling you always the flowers. Tune into what you're looking for. And this idea that you create your reality, it's not meant to be this like antagonistic, like blaming energy. You did this. It's all your fault because you're negative yeah. and God punished you. It's like, no, our manifestations are not a system of punishment and reward based on whether you did something good or bad. It's really just neutral feedback of energy. It's not, again, you're not being punished. 
For example, if you have an energy where you don't trust people and you think people are out to get you, you might manifest a situation where your business partner steals money from you. He didn't yeah. steal that money because you did something bad. It's not your fault. But if you had an energy where like, yeah, people are bad, I don't trust them, then you'll manifest people that will mirror back that lack of trust to you by doing stuff that's bad to you. So it's all just neutral feedback. And um, this idea that you create your reality, yeah, it's not meant to be this blaming thing, like you do it and you, if it's bad, then you messed up. It's like, no, it's empowering. Because yeah. do you like thinking your reality depends on the whims of other people and institutions outside of you and all these things that you can't control? <laughs> your mind somehow likes it likes this idea because your mind doesn't care if you're happy and your mind just wants to preserve its crappy belief system and image of yourself and it doesn't care if you're happy but think about it these ideas to me if you can just let your ego agitation settle a little bit about the way your ego mind interprets these ideas you'll start to see like oh i actually kind of would like to think this like this is actually a good thing that i created because if i created all this crap that means i can shift focus i can shift gears internally yeah. and moving forward create something better yeah. so it's a good thing guys don't take this personally don't let your mind oh your mind guys your mind is gonna like mess with you every step of the way your mind does not care if you're happy stop listening to it go to spirit go to heart that cares about you mind doesn't care just ugh, anything your mind thinks is probably crap and it's not true and it feels badly and and just don't make a willingness to be like I can't stop you, mind, from saying these things, but what I can do is I can choose not to believe it and I can choose not to get emotionally invested in it. And then yeah. if you don't get emotionally invested in your mental chatter, it can't really hurt you as much anymore. Because the feeling, the charge, is what's going to draw the experience yeah. to you, not the words in your head. Yeah. Um, we're talking about, like, not looking at God to be, like, a, this angry judge that's looking at you and yeah. like, moving away from judgment. But let's get it straight judgment is is real we're having yeah. to suffer the repercussions of things that we did coming back as judgments as the karma uh, reaping the harvest for the things that we've sown bitterness mm. hatred anger yeah bad It'll thoughts all come back to you. negative mm -hmm. stuff and then once you because it's not coming back punishment guys yeah just neutral feedback you're not being punished i don't think like i personally the view of karma where like you get comeuppance for being bad or rewarded for being good i don't believe it again because that stems from the idea i don't believe god is a judgmental force mm -hmm. and it's like who's keeping score who's deciding what's good or bad like who, who makes these right so to me that none of that makes sense but yeah karma in the sense of yeah you reap what you sow yeah. like you're you're putting out an energetic signature into the world and you're just getting stuff back and it's just neutral feedback you're not being punished you're not being tested you're not expected to suffer first to get what you want like anything quote unquote bad happening to you that you don't like there's just something in your energy making you a match to that experience and it's just neutral vibrational feedback and then if you can go within and see, okay, what am I putting out there energetically? How can I change this? Your reality changes and yep. it's a very beautiful, simple system actually. Yeah. And then you start receiving, I mean, I'm just using the word judgments, beautiful judgments. You start receiving yeah. beautiful things back. You're doing and you're good to others. And you want stuff and it's okay. There's it's no reason not to, to have it. This human experience is very real to us. We get up and live in this world every day. Of course we want it to be filled with, we have our preferences. We'd rather have money than struggle, healthy than sick. You know, I've had all a lot, I've had all sorts of issues and I prefer yeah. the, the better the better versions instead. So yeah, it's, it's okay that we want all this. Uh, God wants us to, to live in harmony and peace and have all of this. And the way the universe is set up, yeah. we're set up to receive it. It's set up to help us, but we can only be a beneficiary of this wonderful way of, of believing, of, of operating if we believe this is how it works. And you can't be a beneficiary of this if you don't believe you create your reality, if you believe God is some force that you have to curry favor with and it's just like inherently automatically kind of automatically just pissed at us all the time and, mm -hmm. and just like, okay, do something to make me be happy, <laughs> make me happy and that show, show me you're good yeah. and I'm angry with you and make me not be angry with you. Like, yeah, if you believe all of that stuff, this sort of teaching, you know, it, it can't, you can't really uh, do anything with the information because the, the, what's being asked of you on an energetic level, you won't be able to accomplish it because you just don't believe that's how it works. So yeah, it's really just a willingness. Like if you have these painful beliefs about God and religion, and listen, I'm not a religious person. I can't speak to all these different things about it. Um, 
but I'm religious, a spiritual, not religious, that annoying thing that people say, <laughs> but it's like true because like, there's really no other way to say it. But it's, um, but I just, you know, based on my own. So I feel like I do have that connection in faith. I just don't identify with a specific label of a specific yeah. religion, yeah. but yeah, anything that feels painful, any thoughts about God or the universe or any that force beyond us, like that feels painful to you. Like, be willing to consider that's a message from like big you like this pain is like showing you you're believing something that's not true and that's why it hurts and that's how we alert you to to what's not true is like it has to hurt and you have to feel the pain and to know like oh yeah this is not true let me try to what feels better to think and then it's like oh god loves me yeah that feels bad that feels really good and big you's like yeah there's a reason that feels good because that's true you're feeling guidance system yeah. The crappy, untrue stuff feels bad. The good stuff that intuitively warms your heart and just though. feels right. We just that's used to true. the negative stuff. You could deal with it because mm-hmm. you're used to it, and then you attract. Yeah, you, you have the same type of people that have that same stinking thinking around you, and you're just playing. It's like a cesspool. You yeah, can't, you can't get out of it because you're used to it. You accept. You accept your lot. You have no say yeah. in the matter. You're just. It's by the the. By the luck of the draw, maybe. and um, But people have those ideas about God from their family. It didn't come from nowhere. Yeah. You didn't make it up. Uh, you were taught to perform by your, your family or mm-hmm. th- through school. And so a lot of people's ideas about God come from the ideas of their father. My father wasn't yeah. there. Guess what? God's not there. There's no God. Uh, that of course. Your, mm-hmm. your, your, your parents only praised you when you did good stuff or you you know made them laugh or whatever so you feel like you have to do good stuff for god to accept you there's many people right now yeah. healers and and people who are doing the good work who um they're doing it out of a debt that they owe right they've caused yes. a lot of mm-hmm. bad things on the earth they were they come from a troubled youth and doing a lot of bad yeah. stuff so they're doing this a lot of christians even too they're doing this so that you know they're kind of trying to set the karma right they're kind of trying to set the scale yeah. right or whatever. So there, there, it still moves from a performance-based idea versus this this place where grace is, is able to flow to, uh, to you because it's unmerited yeah. favor. You didn't do anything to earn it, so you don't have to do anything to keep it or to lose it. Yeah. It's grace. Mm-hmm. It's freely given. Yeah, it's nice to know that, like, there's infinite abundance of everything. Like, there's enough for everyone. Like we said earlier, the universe or God doesn't, like, need your, like, it's not like some kind of alchemy where it transmutes our suffering into, like, the stuff it puts out back out into the world. It's like, well, I need, um, I'll give you money, but if you, I need you to suffer, like, 20 hours, and I can give you, like, a grand. And, the, like, it's not like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, who are we paying with our suffering? Who needs our suffering in all of this? Like, to me, it, it makes no sense. So yeah, I think um, we're not meant to suffer. We'll suffer because of our humanity and we have stuff that we, the way we view things, the journey will involve pain, not because it's inherently painful or because we're supposed to suffer, but we all have our stuff. We have our traumas, our unresolved childhood issues, our unresolved anger that we were taught is not appropriate to express. Um, the things that happen to us, our mind has all these stories about the things that happen to us and the stories are what cause the pain, not the actual experiences. And yeah, so that part, there's going to be pain in the sense we have this pain that we created ourselves, but the journey's not supposed to be painful. Getting what you want, getting to a, a happier place, getting to a healthier place emotionally inherently should not be painful. That's why I talk about too with the law of attraction, really try not to get into the trap of making it all about getting stuff you don't have because that's very painful because all you're focused on is like what you don't have and the pain of that. And you can't get to a good feeling place with a journey that, that feels badly. And that, that's something that seems so basic to us, but like we don't realize it. And we somehow think personal growth and all this is inherently some kind of suffering. And like you earn your happiness by, by doing the suffering of, of inner growth work. And it's like, yeah, you'll suffer because we created pain within ourselves, but we don't yeah. need to suffer. So it's you, important to make that distinction. You suffer if you don't deal with it. If you don't deal yeah. with it, it becomes infected. So, all of us have been wronged. All of us have been hurt, right? We mm-hmm. have this thorn in our flesh or thorn in our finger, and we're used to it. If we don't deal with it, it's going to get infected, and it's going to spread exactly. throughout our body. When you pull mm-hmm. that thorn out, it's going to hurt. It doesn't yeah. feel good. when you, Or even pulling the Band-Aid off, 
It hurts, mm -hmm. but you have to yeah. do it. You're going to go through the pain. You're going to go through the suffering. Yeah, and really, you have to deal with it. And, I want, and I'd, I'd like to tell people as someone that's really embraced my suffering and I'm all about diving into my crap, it's really not that bad, guys. Like, yeah, like cause when you remove the reward all the is great. resistance of your negative, <laughs> it's just like, it's really like you'll survive. Like they're just feelings. Like they can't really hurt you or kill you. Yeah. Cause one of the big things is like, we resist the feelings. We criticize, we judge. We're thinking, well, I'm a person of faith. I shouldn't feel this way. And you judge your lack of faith. Or you think I've been working on this issue for 10 years now. I should be over this by now. And, and then you judge that you're still not over it. That's where the real pain of your emotion comes in. The actual feelings themselves, when you strip away the layers of judgment, resistance, criticism, I don't want to deal with this. Yeah. I just want to try to wrap it up and so I don't disturb it. The actual feelings themselves, even more intense ones, when all of that is removed from it, they're actually quite bearable and they're really not that bad. We're so afraid of our negativity and we'll do anything to avoid it. But guess what, especially if you're interested in the law of attraction, if you do that, your pain is gonna rule your manifestations because everything you're gonna be doing is just to minimize your pain. You can't tap into the miraculous <laughs> from pain minimization. Yeah. Do you think your mind, your mind doesn't care about miraculous and, and communing with the love and glory of God. Your mind cares about, I just want enough money to pay my bills. I just want someone that will sleep in my bed next to me because I'm lonely and give me a baby before it's too late. Like that's what your, like, that's what your mind is willing to settle for. And you're thinking like, Ugh, that's not yeah. so great. And like when you can have like the amazing, amazing, most amazing versions of everything. And yeah, it's like, um, and also too, I would say with this journey, whether it's law of attraction or just personal growth in general, make the goal to truly heal and transform your pain. Don't make the goal, let me find all these ways to not disturb it and so it won't be bothered mm -hmm. because that's what most of us are doing and we don't realize it. We say we want to heal our pain and deal with it, but that's not actually, we actually don't mean that. <laughs> what we actually mean is I want to find a bunch of tools and techniques and philosophies and all these things I can do to keep my pain contained, wrap it up, let me rearrange the outside in ways that it won't get disturbed, that it won't get kicked up, and that's what we're doing. And I realized I was doing that for a long time. And yeah, I was happier on a surface level. I manifested all sorts of great things. Yep. But what I was looking for on that deeper level, that eluded me. And I could not get that until I was like really ready to deal with my inner ick. So yeah, try to make the goal. Be careful of, am I really trying to heal all this stuff? Or am I just trying to wrap it up and tuck it away and rearrange my outside so none of it gets disturbed? That's a very different journey. And like I said before, that journey is all you're doing is focusing on your pain and your pain will rule your life because it's not actually going anywhere. And everything around you, you're going to try to control your life so your pain doesn't get disturbed. Good luck with that because you can't control anything outside of you. The only thing you can control at the end of the day is your inner world and that's it. So if you can heal that in a real way, like you're ahead of 99.9% .9 of people mm -hmm. in the world and even personal growth people, you're even way ahead of all them too. So all of us were just running around trying to get stuff we don't have and, 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 and wrap our pain away so it doesn't bother us. And it's like, we could do that, but it's at some point it, it won't be enough and it, you'll need more. Sounds good. Well, Kelly, I appreciate this interview. I really enjoyed it. Go ahead and plug your, uh, your website much. and uh, all the cool um, stuff that you have going on where people yeah, can check you out. Um, I, you can find me at livelifemadetoorder.com. I have hundreds of pieces of free content on there. I actually do a podcast as well, but mine's a very ghetto Bush Lee podcast of me just talking myself for 15 to 20 minutes. It's not like a real show. It's kind of like if you want to hear me talk like you're talking here, but just me, you can listen to that. Um, blog posts, I do private coaching. I do one-off sessions as well as four and eight-week packages uh, for people that really want to go deep. Um, I sell a bunch of courses on my site. Uh, my courses are not programs like do this, do that, step-by-step -step stuff. They're really basically series of lectures with some assignments that come with them that help you explore your energy more deeply around the subject of the class. So it's not like a, a program, like I'm gonna tell you what to do to get something, but if you want to explore certain subjects more deeply as it relates to the law of attraction and specifically like relationships, business, um, I have that stuff for sale that a lot of people like that. Yeah, livelifemadetoorder.com is, you'll find everything there. If you liked what I shared about the law of attraction, my perspective on it, my content is pretty in depth, and you'll have plenty, plenty to chew on over at uh, livelifemeetsorder.com. 
Make sure y'all go over there, check out her work. She's got a lot of really cool stuff over there. Kelly, again, thank you for coming on. We'll have to do it again soon, thank my you, friend. Derek. Thank this you, Derek. This was awesome. All right. And um, thank you for helping me getting over my video YouTube stuff. I'm always like, oh, I hate when my stuff goes on YouTube. <laughs> but I'm like, you know what? I got to get over that. So, yeah, this was very fun. And, um, yeah, I had a great time. And, yeah, and I hope you guys enjoyed this. And remember, God loves you. He doesn't hate you. He doesn't want you to suffer. <laughs> he doesn't need your suffering for anything it's not necessary. What does he need it for? It doesn't, nothing, right? He loves you. He wants you to be happy. He'll help you with all your human needs, but you just have to believe it works that way. That's, yeah. that's the key. We have that responsibility on our end to believe all these wonderful things, to reap the benefit of them, basically, right? Yeah. I've been talking about working with God versus working against God. Those, that's yeah, your choice. Yeah, work with that's God. What... God, the universe, it wants to work with you, but it can if you don't think it, it he wants to help you. He can't yeah. unless you believe he wants to, yeah. Um, before we go, just, just let everybody know what you're doing right now. Cause you're, you're actually traveling ex yeah, right um, now, right? Is that what so you, is that what you're doing full time? Yeah. Just uh, like traveling and doing sessions when you travel? What's, what's that look like? Yeah. Um, basically, so since like 2011, uh, sorry, I'm like, my not in like a good position here. Um, my husband and I have been doing our online business ventures and traveling the world and we do a lot of house sitting, which means we come to people's houses and watch their pets. Brings us to a lot of interesting places. Right now, we're doing a two-month house sit in Oman, which is a country in the Middle East, if you haven't heard of it. I find wow. a lot of people haven't. I'll admit, I didn't know too much about it until recent years. Um, a very lovely city we're in. Uh, yeah, Middle Eastern culture, it's fascinating. Yeah, so what I do, my thing is, I like to travel, and I have my business is location independent, and I can work with my clients all over the world, just you know, need an internet connection. They don't need an internet connection. They can work with me by phone, but I do everything online. And um, yeah, that's what I do. And let me tell you guys real quick. If someone had told me this would be my life like a bunch of years ago when everything was like falling apart, my father had died, I had no money, I was anxious. I was like, my life was a, a giant mess. I would have been like, nice story, but I don't know how that's gonna happen. Your mind doesn't know how anything you want is gonna happen. The how is none of your business. It can't see the infinite combination of circumstances. It does not know the path. It does not know who you're going to meet. It does not know the ideas and insights that you have not had yet. So just have a little trust, have a little faith, work on just general vibe management. Just try to feel better overall, just for the sake of feeling better. That energy, will you'll start to see all sorts of stuff show up from that without even focusing on anything in particular. And I always like very general rather than specific focus. That never really feels that good to me. So yeah, just have a little faith, have a little trust. But yeah, you have to believe that God wants you to have all of these things and, and thinks you deserve them. And I, I do believe that whatever God is does does think this way. Um, yeah, that's it. So you created this with the law of attraction, this life of journeying, oh, traveling the world, yeah. doing what you yeah. love. You wake up and get to Listen, do what you yeah. love for a living. Yeah, exactly. And you know what? It wasn't always an easy journey. It's a no-brainer, guys. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's no like, brainer. listen, you'll you'll have to go through a lot of stuff internally because you'll have a lot of beliefs you need to change. You might get opposition. So in that sense, the journey is difficult. But again, it's our human created difficulty. Inherently, it's not supposed to be hard. But yeah, it will be difficult in that sense. But just, you know, commit to figure out what you want. You get that clarity and go after it. And yeah, know that the true root of cause in your life is your energy, your belief system, action and all of that. You'll do all that stuff. But all that's level of effect. Everything in the physical world is just level of effect. Nothing's truly created there. That's all a result of mental and right. energetic that's everything, good. right? So remember, level of cause is your mind. The outside world, a lot of it's just a big fat illusion. Anything that feels bad about the outside world is faulty thinking, and it's not true. It seems real because this faulty thinking led us to collectively create all of this crap. Mm -hmm. But the truth of reality, if you can keep that in your heart, um, the outside world becomes a lot easier to deal with. And like Derek said before, you kind of get what you focus on. You'll start seeing the good and the love. Yeah, the bad stuff's still there too, but the good, there's plenty of good and you'll tune into that more and you'll be able to exist in the world much more peacefully. Yep. Good stuff, my friend. Thank you for coming on. We'll have to do it again. Thank you so much. Hey, who is your, um, who, who is your husband? Ryan Biddle. Wow. I was gonna say he's a he's a good interviewer. You, a good uh, interview. I just, I really I like just, him. I just looked at your name um, on on Zoom here, and it says Ryan Bidoff, a good friend of mine, um, has done some 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 work. So he so your husband has a blog. What's the name of his blog? 
blogging from paradise and blogging he does a lot paradise. of like um he talks a lot about his travels but his big thing is really just like blogging you know professionally and you know all that stuff so but he loves talking about he's very spiritual and he takes a very spiritual approach to business i think you would really enjoy talking i didn't even know that was your i didn't even know that was your husband until i looked on zoom and it said rb bit off and i was yeah, like it's account. Mm-hmm. is that possibly yeah. Ryan bit off i know who he is um, I got, I've actually yeah, got a friend no, of mine, my, um, Alonzo Pachardo, has done oh, a lot of- Oh, Alonzo, yeah. Alonzo. <laughs> yeah, Alonzo, I know yeah. Alonzo. Yeah, that's yeah. So funny. Yeah. yeah Me and Alonzo did guy. a lot of stuff together. I got an amazing interview with Alonzo on my channel that we did. We did like a two-hour Talk interview. Talk about doing business from like a spiritual place, right? He's very, really good. yeah. Good mm-hmm. stuff. That's, yeah, that's Alonzo's awesome. Great. I didn't even know that until we're you know about to hang up, man. <laughs> That's so awesome. Synchronicity. That's so funny. All right. I well, love this interview. It was so good. I um, yeah. I don't know. Obviously, I don't know the chat box. I hope most of the feedback was positive and it, people no, it definitely enjoyed was. it. Definitely mm-hmm. was. Yeah, good stuff. Not yeah. like all the like, the talk. I'm like, no, God, no, 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 I no, no. Stuff. It's cool. And, and pe- people are just, I mean, <laughs> you know, a lot of these concepts are new, new for people. You know what I'm saying? So everybody's yeah. just trying to, to, you know what I'm saying, move into this place of how do, you know, what does that look like for me in my life? Me and my nine yeah. to five. How do I create this? And, and then, you know what I'm saying? Trying to really rationalize hope that, everything. like, you know, yeah. Like, if it is, like, religious people, and like I said, I'm not religious, so I can't relate so much to, like, that conditioning and overcoming it. It's a mixed but, multitude. Um, knowing, here. Yeah, knowing what I know about, you know, energy and knowing, like, the blocks people have, I know with the religion from clients and stuff, and I really do hope I was able to say something to them that maybe got through at least a little bit. To move them away from the Definitely. suffering, God's angry worthiness, and I'm not worthy, because that's that's a deep energy. To, if you're going to work with a teaching like this, that's a deep energy to overcome, and it's it's challenging. And I, I do hope that I said at least something to get people thinking, like, oh, yeah. yeah, maybe this view that feels so badly, yeah, maybe that bad feeling means it's not true. Yep, yep, yep. And so, like, you know, just like working through it. I think that each one of these podcasts is helping people work through it. I get messages every day from people who are thanking me, people who are in religion trying to understand this level of spirituality, or people who are coming out of the church, and people who have kind of, you know what I'm saying, forsaken that a long time ago, thanking me for connecting yeah. the dots again, how they're, you know, God is for them and those type of things. So it's a little, it's like an eclectic audience of, of just pretty much some well, of everything. That, so that's a nice work- feeling, I think, probably for the people that moved away, because they might they might want that connection, but the connection they were taught was so they were distorted. Pushed away. It's not, it feels, they were pushed it away. It feels nice. Yeah, yeah, it feels nice to them to like have that connection to God in a way that feels good and not bad. Yeah, so that exactly. must be a nice feeling for people that want that connection, but it was just always taught that it's a, a crappy connection, you know, and it's yeah. not a good feeling one. So that's, I, I think you're doing something that's very, very important. And I think especially in this day and age, more people are breaking away from that religious, you know, people are starting to see like this is, there's something off here, this way of operating and how it's influenced the world has been very bad, kind of. And yeah, I think people are waking up and you coming from that background and having that faith and still having, believing, you know, to, and then for you to present it, I think that's very valuable contribution. And it's really great. That's very important work, what you're doing. Thank you. And so thank you for everything that you and your husband brings to the table. This was a good talk. We'll have to do it again. Thanks. Yes. And I have awesome. to email thank your you husband. Derek. I want to get him on as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, I will um, forward him. I could either give you his email or I could forward him your contact info. What would be better for either you? Either way. Either way. I'll, I'll reach okay, out. Cool. I'll send him an email. Yeah. Awesome. You have a great day. All right, my friend. You too. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. All right, bye-bye. Wow. Right at the very end. Synchronicity, man. Everything is connected. Um, You find out that it's a small world after all, right? Um, Wow, this is... I didn't even know that that was was her her husband, Ryan Bidoff, and I have been uh, checking out a lot of his stuff for a couple years now, ever since uh, Alonzo Pichardo, me and him used to work together a lot, and he's done a lot of stuff with online blogging and making a living from home. And Ryan Bidoff has a blog called Blogging from Paradise. And it's just really weird how everything's connected like that. I love it, man. Um, what she's talking about, like, people don't want to deal with their BS, right? They don't want to deal with the hard stuff. I mean, rightfully so. People are, are, are 
looking for ways to to feel good um look at opiate addiction the opiate crisis man and people instead of dealing with their problems they get addicted to opiates to numb the pain physically and spiritually to go within and deal with the hurt to deal with the stuff you have to deal with it man eventually you reach a point where you have to go in and you have to deal with it and it's the levels it's waves there's no secret to say this is a one-time thing we offer personal sessions and stuff and and you have to be willing to work with somebody man it's not it's not like a, a one-time thing and everything's good you know and uh you have to go through deliverance you have to go through you have to retrain your mind man you have to renew your mind the bible says to renew your mind daily not come to Christ and receive a new mind, then it's good. Now, there's there's levels and things that can come in a day. There's strides that come in a day. There's old paradigms and thought patterns that fall off in a day. But it is a daily walk, and none of us have arrived. None of us have reached that final destination. Not me, not you, not anyone you see on television, anybody you've looked up to that you followed, they're still on this journey too in the laws of the universe the law of attraction all of this kind of stuff comedic principles they apply to everybody nobody's exempt we're on a level playing field no one is exempt so stop trying to numb the pain go to the place of pain even even early i don't like to talk about a lot of this stuff but um when I receive that message, because I get them from time to time, and they it it does something. Like I'll get like man, we'll say eighty beautiful messages from people, and then get one that says you're stupid, you talk like you're uneducated, you don't know anything, blah blah blah. And for some reason, you know, we've talked about this a lot. It 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 does something. <laughs> like you can mess up your day, especially like kids on the internet having to deal with of with trolls and bullies and stuff. But it, it does something. But Go to the, the point of pain and realize, okay, why, why does this stuff something? Am I looking for acceptance from everyone? And and why every why everyone is, is agreeing with me, I'm good. But when somebody disagrees, you know, we have trolls. We have haters, right? Everybody's going to have them, especially once you get a platform, you're out there. They're going to come. Um, but they're going to tell you things about yourself that your family and your friends might not tell you. They're going to uh, look at, you from an ob, uh, objective standpoint to show you things about yourself that you might not like not even if that's their intention but you have especially when it makes you feel a certain type of way and it comes a lot when people lash out at you go to that point you have to go to the point of pain don't try to act like it doesn't exist don't try to act like you're you're okay because every time something like that happens you're going to have that feeling you're going to be triggered when those people come around when and and there's so many people i've talked about this like people get upset when i say the word god i did it i did in that guided meditation i say the word yahweh i in, in, in my writing i wrote the word yahweh and someone got offended that i said yahweh just because of their paradigm and the way like they were okay with god but they weren't okay with yahweh because that represents something else to them that may or not may or may not be true from their realm of study and it triggered them you have to go to the point where you're triggered and understand why it's triggered there's people that i've interviewed interviews that i've been on when i say god they get upset they don't like that word because it reminds them of the southern baptist church they used to go to in the 80s whatever it is like these things that trigger you um music smoke i remember man when i came out of like deep witchcraft right it was into some really dark stuff and god saved me pulled me out of that i couldn't be around incense if i smelled incense smoke it reminded me of rituals and things that i did to make seal packs with entities and i used rituals if i smelled it it immediately brought those thoughts and ideas back to me there's nothing wrong with with incense in the scriptures the the priest burned incense continually in the temple and offered up prayers to heaven with the incense 
there's nothing wrong with incense. But for me, it triggered me and it brought back these memories. Now, I love incense. I'm at a place where I can smell incense and burn incense or alcohol. I remember uh, coming out of that lifestyle. I've, I thought that, and I was a Christian, if I thought that if I drank a sip of alcohol, then those demons that were cast out, those um, that, that place of darkness that I, I left would immediately come back if I drank alcohol. And I remember the first time I had a sip of wine for communion. It was a scary. I didn't know. I had to retrain my mind and understand who I was as a son. And I'm not being pushed around by any wind of belief system or any wind of demon influence in the earth. You have to know who you are. Go to that 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 point where it's uncomfortable and so for many of you listening this is a challenge like if you're coming out of christianity or you're in christianity like it's so much like it triggers everybody differently and it challenges people in a good way in a great way and so people are, are being challenged and people are being uh, pushed and stuff so that's good you you never want to reach a place where you're just like bitter and you think you got everything figured out it's a growing process it's a daily uh, process um talking about attracting the things that you want in in your life um some comments in the chat I'm, I'm taking questions and things like that people are saying there's a difference between your wants and your and your needs that's true your your basic necessities if your basic necessities aren't met yeah you don't need to be worrying about what you what you want your needs what your basic necessities are and i'm gonna tell you what god the universe yahweh cares about all of it cares about everything your wants and your needs and your desires the scripture says if you delight yourself in the lord he will give you the desires of your heart now what happens here is in the renewed mind in that process your desires change your desires to do evil your desires to just give me give me give me your desires change your desires move from it's not about me anymore it's about my family it's about the collective it's about my friends how can i give back and that's righteous when it moves from that and you understand that um god cares about it all even the desire, and even the stuff too, the stuff to enjoy this life. Yeah, your best life now. When you want your best life tomorrow or, in, or you want it in heaven, you can have both because guess what? On earth as it is in heaven, as above, so below. We're creating heaven on earth. We are the only glimpse of heaven that some people may ever see. And we have to understand who we are, understand that power and, and authority that we walk in. If not, you're just being pushed around. You're just like that kid on um on uh <laughs> what is that? Uh the kid on Little Giants. I'm gonna try to pull this scene up. Let's see. And hopefully I won't get banned off of YouTube. Um I don't I don't even know if I can find the scene, but anyway, is who knows? It'll probably ban me if I played it. But I don't know if you guys remember that scene. The little kid comes in with all the pads. And um, he's allergic to everything. And his mom was going to let him play. Let's see. This is like all this is the trailer and stuff. I'm trying to find it. But. Oh, well. Anyway, he's being pushed around. And this would be a good scene. I'll have it queued up for the next one. He's being pushed around in a circle. Whoa, whoa. And that's how some of you are. You're just being pushed around by every wind of doctrine, every belief. It's part of the process. You got to know who you are. I got friends in, in the chat right now. Um, and they've told me, look, I'm listening to you. I listen to this guy. I listen to her. And you all have something valuable. And you all have this way that you do it. But I don't know how that's supposed to look for me. And, it, and I tell them, look, it's not, it's, a, it's not any of us. It's about you. Maybe take a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of this. Combine it and it's you. You're a little bit of all of it. Right? That's how it's supposed to look. Whatever helps you, whatever serves you. 
the desires of your heart. Yeah, God cares about it. Those desires are there. Renew the mind, renew the desires and understand when it comes to the desires, like there, there's a scripture, man, this principle and uh, Deuteronomy, I believe it's Deuteronomy chapter 14, where it's talking about the tithe, right? And it's talking about how all of these uh, Israelites would have to travel from out of town to celebrate Passover and to do these different feasts and festivals. And they were to bring their tithe with them. And the tithe was their grain offering, their first fruits, cattle, these type of things, right? Uh, just a percentage of that to, so that the priest could live and all that kind of stuff. Well, if someone lived, you know, a hundred miles away or whatever, and you got to bring all these cattle, all this grain, but it's only you and just a couple people with your tribe, like it's going to be hard for you to bring that to Jerusalem to celebrate. So the scripture says, if those of you who have all of this stuff have to travel, it says, sell your, um, your cattle, your grain, all that stuff, sell it where you are, get the money. When you come to Jerusalem, spend it in our economy. And it says to buy whatever your heart desires. This is God, a commandment, spend it on whatever your heart desires. You say, okay, what is that? Well, and, and it also mentions strong drink. Come here, have a good time. Join into the um, festivities and the, the festival. Just spend it here in the economy. But it, it has to deal with the desires. God does care about your, the desires of your heart, man. But again, renew your heart, renew your mind, and your, de your desires will change. I don't desire the things I desired 15 years ago, 10 years ago, 5 years ago. As you grow in the spirit, as you're led by the spirit, your desires change and it, and it, it become it's not about you anymore. It's about the collective. It really is. Um, and talking about judgment, right? And, um, and, and fear and trauma and things like that about God being the judge, right? And it's not to say that God doesn't judge, right? But it's totally different for us to even approach because our idea of judgment is flawed god does not judge the way men judge god is a he does judge he does rule but he rules righteously a righteous judgment that's the difference we don't even understand that we judge by appearance and this is the scriptures we judge by appearance God judges by the heart. He judges the intentions. There's a lot of people doing the wrong thing, but with good intentions. And this goes into, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. They don't know what they're doing until you give them the knowledge of the truth. They don't even know. They don't even know what they're doing. Paul goes on to break this down and said, look, I didn't know what I was doing. The most high did not hold it against me. The most high don't hold it against me. I don't know. And you're still trying to, when you was in a place of ignorance, you're still trying to right wrongs from things that you did when you was in a place of ignorance. God throws your, your sins and your mistakes as far as the east is through the west and says he remembers them no more if god can do it why i mean why are you still trying to hold on to that stuff why are you st still trying to remind yourself and i'm telling I'm just, i've just been seeing this and i'm trying to make sure that i'm not operating out of that this place of people who obviously empaths right people who um are healers most of us, and I'm telling you, I've, I'm almost at 200 episodes on this podcast. I've had a lot of people on this show, I've talked with a lot of people. A lot of you guys have been with me this entire journey. And I'm, I'm f starting to see different things, man, connecting dots. A lot of empaths, a lot of healers are people who have been hurt. I think it comes with the territory for you to be empathic, for you to be able to show empathy. A lot of times you have to have been through that stuff. Crisis counselors, 
right? Someone who is in, a, in, in, in the field of being a crisis counselor, they're going to reach out to, to, to people that they resonate with. I have friends who are, shout out to Brooklyn. She's a page, just became a patron, a good friend. She's a crisis counselor. And she's dealing with people who are dealing with suicidal thoughts and addictions. Why? Why is she passionate? Because she went through that. She went through that. So that empathy, she came out of it, right? She came out of it so that now she got help herself. So now she can go back and help people. And you got to understand the way the spirit works is whatever field you're in, whatever sins you're partaking of, God has this funny way of cleaning you up and sending you right back to that same crowd. Look at Brian Headwatch from Corn. It's so funny to see him um, come out of um, the rock star lifestyle and being addicted to crystal meth and opiates and all of this stuff. Hearing his story, see him come out of that, quit the band, um, get into church, get into Christianity. Years later, as he's gotten, gotten healing, God sends him back to the band Corn. God sends him back to play in the band, back to the people, which are his family, and gives him a piece about it and gives him instructions on how to infiltrate that culture and bring forth healing, love, and understanding. He's going to corn concerts at the end. Hey, you want to meet me? The, 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 the lead guitarist from corn? Let's hang out. He's telling them about Jesus. Big groups of people. Beautiful story. Uh, he's catching hell for that. The, the, I still read comments now and uh, his story he's he's making he's making a lot of new uh, headlines and stuff they just come out with a movie but he's catching a, a lot of flack for him going back to that I've seen these carnal Christians they would think that they were spiritual Christians though they're posting comments like as a dog returneth to his vomit uh, so does Brian Headwatch returns to corn and how can he go back to that and how could he play in the band and that music is this and that music is that and uh, people judging the, him and stuff like that. But God has this funny way of pulling you out, cleaning you up and sending you right back to the people that you came out of. That's what he does, man. And uh, for those who have been forgiven much, love much. A lot of times we want to come out of the world and go hide in the church. I did it. And it, it, it was a process. Part of my renewal of learning and renewing my mind was going through church culture and that church experience. But when it was time to leave, I knew I didn't want to. I didn't want to. I kept trying to go back. But the most I shut that door and he, he kicked me out, man. I had to leave. There was other people that needed what I had and they're not in the church. Right. And I've always seen church. I had, um, Brian Jones on here. He was uh, my old pastor. And I remember telling him he, with the cave ministries, I said, look, this church is the rehab. You don't hang out in rehab. You go to rehab. Some people go once a week. I got friends in rehab. They work the system, but eventually you graduate. You have and going through rehab. There's a process, forgiveness, forgiving people that wronged you and then going to, to people that you've wronged, searching your heart and making the wrongs right. Hey, I'm asking you to forgive me. I was this. I understand now. There's It's a process and steps that you have to work. Once you do that, you don't hang out there. You have to be sent back into the world. You get cleaned up and you go out with a passion, with empathy, ready to win the world. And you do it practically. You do it with a genuine passion. You're really passionate for those people because you've been through it. You've been through it. It's not about being a zealot. It's not about judgment. The way that we judge, God judges judge with a righteous judgment. We can't even fathom the mind and heart of God. When we just get a little glimpse of it, we're just caught up in a static euphoric glory. When we just get a glimpse of the goodness that God has towards us. When we just sit down and we do a meditation and we think about that, we breathe in and we just, that gratitude that extends from heaven within. 
it's more higher and more intoxicating than any drug on the planet to know how much the mind of God that created us and placed us here loves us. And just take that one thought of love and just explore it. I hope you get the meditation. I hope you I hope you get that throne room meditation that I created. It does that. I hope you get to experience that. But man, the love is overwhelming. The never ending, overwhelming, reckless love of God, man. People have created songs about it and keep creating songs, keep creating and exploring the depths of God's love and this grace that that, that uh, extends to us. Don't hog it up. Take that love, take that grace and, and move, go with it. When we're talking about faith, we're talking about understanding God. The scripture says is that love is the is what fuels your faith. Like it is about love for who? For God and for your brothers and sisters. That is the law. That is the commandment. The whole universe loves us. We are one. Thank you, Amanda. Understand that you are more than a conqueror. You are worthy. You are created in Christ Jesus to go out and do good works. You got to do it. It takes you. You have to do it. People, we got. We have to move away from the suffering servant of thinking that God will love us based on our works. Let's go a little bit deeper. Based on our thoughts. They're, they're very important. Very important. You manifest it. You manifest everything what you think about the world that you create. But there's scriptures that say his thoughts are continually for me. Thoughts and not just thoughts, but plans like he has plans to to bless you, plans to prosper you. These ideas to renew your mind. Versus coming from feeling like you're a beggar. Like a beggar on a street corner begging for love. In the club begging for love. On on these apps begging for love. You're not a beggar, man. You're a son and daughter of the Most High. You're the righteousness of God created in Christ Jesus to do good works. Each and every one of us. Moving back to that you. Putting the ball in your court. What are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with it? Not what are they going to do with it? Not what is God going to do with it? But what are you going to do with it? The ball is in your hands. Let your next move be your best move. Who do you say that I am? I'm worried about Kelly Cooper, who she says I am. There's some ideas, things we can learn from. I'm worried about Truth Seeker, who he says I am. What about your pastor, who he says I am? Who do you say I am? It always comes back to you. Who do you believe in? I put my faith in God. Blessed I'm still breathing. Better understand it, man. Um, moving from the feelings, right? The feelings can deceive you. We have to be led by the spirit. We have to be able to discern the spirit, to discern those feelings I'm telling you, one way, one day you might wake up and you, you ready to win the world for Jesus. One day you might wake up, you've got all your plans and goals. I'm going to knock this out and man, I'm ready to embrace this day. And you're doing it. You're, 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 you're making strides. The next day you wake up on the wrong side of the bed and you're just not feeling it. Just not feeling it. Hey, it happens. It happens. That's why we're talking about which feelings are for me which ones are against me it is that is the, the spiritual warfare about those thoughts to renew your mind god doesn't give you a vision and then change it the next day i ain't feeling good let me try this i'm telling y'all all all my friends man y'all better get stick with it man quit changing mlms I got a dude every day. He creates a whole. They got people who create new Facebook pages and new. And trust me, I've been there. That's why I can speak on it. There's new MLMs. He's trying to sell me oil one day. The next day, he's trying to sell me CBD. The next day, he's trying to sell me this and sell me that and sell me this and get me to join up. And I always say, look, because I've been a part of pyramid schemes, I say, look, show me your first paycheck. 
and I'll sign up with bells and whistles. I'll be your fr- the first on your list. They never can show you the paycheck. Never. Well, you got to sign up for me to show you, man. Okay. I see. Show me your paycheck and I'll sign up. That's how that works. Get your vision. <laughs> Write it down. Make it plain. That's what the scripture says in the book of Hosea. Write it down. Make it plain. Look at it every day. There was commandments and monuments and necklaces and tinctures and little statues and stuff that uh, w- were created in, in the Bible that when they looked upon them, it made them remember a covenant with God. A promise of God. We look at the scriptures and we remember the promises of God. We look at the cross. Remember the promise of God. We look at the rainbow. Remember the promise of God. He says, write it down and make it plain so that you won't depart from it so that you can pull out that list. Literally write it down. What is the vision? Get with God. Ask what the vision is. He'll give it to you. He loves you. He's got a vision. It's to bless you. It's to prosper you. There's so many more places we can go with this. It gets really, really beautiful. And that's what we're exploring in the podcast. That's what I'm exploring in my music. And these meditations is very beautiful. And we're going to explore the depths of that. But get that vision, write it down, and make it plain. So you have to. You might have to go back to it. Dang. How did I start here? But I'm now here. If you're looking at it and you're keeping it continually in front of your eyes, you're less likely to depart from it. And that's why in the scriptures, God commanded them to make monuments. Look, you had this big triumph, build a monument. They would take rocks, place them on top of each other. You know what I'm saying? They would build statues and little, like I said, little, little statues and the mezuzah that you hang around your neck. It has the scriptures. It has the commandments rolled up in it. It has the blessing of God rolled up in it and you wear it around your neck. And then also, you have the mezuzah on your door. There was times where they would wear them on their head, right in in in, in the, the. It's called a phylactery. You, you wear it on your head, so that you are always reminded about the promises of God. Why? Because it's how easy do we forget? How soon do we forget? So you have to look at this daily. Every time you come in and out your house, you see that that reminds you of the promise of God. Write it down so that you're reminded of the vision. Because you'll forget. You'll forget. Write it down. Take a picture. I don't care. So that you can keep returning to it. Also, when you write something down, you're 90% more likely to see it out. 90% more likely to see it out. Than just having a good thought. Oh, yeah, I'm going to come back to that thought. Okay, when? Next week? Tomorrow? As soon as you thank it. Look, you got all kind of apps on your phone where you where you can you can start writing things down. Anyway, I don't know who it's. Some got some weird people at my door, y'all. Let me get off of here, though. We'll see what they want. I got to watch them. I don't know who these people are. Anyway, y'all pray for me. I got that thing in the back. <laughs> I love y'all. Subscribe to the channel. Follow my Patreon. I got to go see who these people are. Peace, peace. Your will is so much higher than mine So much higher than mine So much deeper than mine So much deeper than mine Well that does it for this episode folks To hear more episodes of the Truth Seeker Podcast Head over to truthseeker.com And if you're wanting to support the show and get rewards Go to our Patreon page at